Hello everyone, this is RF and today we are here with another unit of CIA part 3, unit 6, which is about databases and application development. Uh, this is a brief introduction about myself and my academic and my professional background just in case if you're interested you can pause and uh, if you're not you can just skim through it uh, this is an interesting slide because it gives you an overview of the entire syllabus uh, there are basically four domains but I personally classify three domains because the first domain is about business acumen but the second and third is more related to IT um, within the second and third domain the third the second domain is about IT as a, as a infrastructure IT databases and applications for so the software and the hardware side of the IT uh, whereas, whereas the third domain is about the information security how you protect your data inside the um, inside the IT infrastructure uh, the last domain, which is domain four, it is about, it basically covers uh, two main areas, financial accounting, and the second one is management accounting, accounting uh, along with there is certain topics related to transfer pricing and taxation. In our earlier videos, we have covered fr um, from one to five, which was more related to business related, in, uh, I mean, which is more um, inclined toward the business topics. For example, organization, strategy, motivation, theories, project management. And now from today, we are starting with the IT domain. And IT domain, within the IT domain, we are, we are now focusing on the first part, the domain two, which is about the uh, IT infrastructure and IT hardware and software. Um, software, when I say software, I mean applications and databases. Overall, if you can divide uh, in approximation the entire syllabus, 35% of the syllabus is already recorded and the videos are shared with you, uh, which pertains to the uh, business acumen. Now we are starting with the uh, domain two, uh, which is about information technology. Uh, going forward, we will be uh, we will be having a discussion about information security, which is domain three. Domain two and three, which is predominantly related to IT, uh, constitute around 45% of the entire syllabus, uh, whereas uh, the first domain, because acumen is 35, so overall it constitutes around 80% of the entire syllabus. The financial and the management accounting is around 20% of the entire syllabus. So this is how you can plan um, your, or strategize your uh, preparation for the CIA part three. So here we are with the entire syllabus of Unit 6. Unit 6 is divided basically in two or three components. The first part is about databases and the second part is about application. Um, within the databases, we will be discussing about the some of the key terminologies pertaining to database. For example, what is um, data, what is field, what is bit and byte. Uh, so these are some of the key terminologies which we need to be aware of in order to understand what is a database. The second um, part, uh, the second uh, key element that we will be discussing under databases is the structure. There are different types of uh, structures in a database. There, there could be of different types of structure. Um, so there are uh, hierarchical uh, structure for a database, uh, network structure, relational, and non-relational -rel uh, uh, database structures. Then there are certain additional terminologies that uh, we need to be acquainted with. The second part of the uh, unit is about application, that whenever we want to develop an app, or, or the company wants to develop an app, what are the process that they go through? There is a need assessment, there is, um, um, what are the processes that they take? Uh, 
would they want to build inside the application or to outsource um, uh, the application and there are certain other uh, topics which we need to be aware of in terms of application development as an auditor uh, why we are reading all this uh, because it is important for an Intel auditor to understand certain aspect of you know, certain technical aspects of uh, um, applications and databases within the system which we are using so all the financial records are basically stored in databases within uh, within any uh, application and we need to be aware of because what we as an Intel auditor do that sometimes we collaborate with the IT auditors or other specialists to ascertain that how these information are being stored and whenever we apply any query to any application or whenever we give any command to any application that how they pick that information from those databases so databases you can consider as an, uh, a store of information uh, in a systematical order from where this application uh, retrieved the information and reproduces in front of us so let's start with our first uh, section of the entire si uh, unit six it is about databases so there are two elements in the entire unit six which we will be studying the first one is database and the second one is application so without having a database you cannot develop an application because there is the application basically uses the the content or the information from databases so the basic thing is databases that you need to understand uh, before we move to the second part of application um, so there are certain terminologies that we need to be aware of which are related to a database um, the first one is binary storage so in uh, what happened in the computer that all the information are stored through two digits uh, zero or one we can also um, say that it's like a switch on and off so the data which are being um, which are being stored in any computer it is basically fundamentally in the form of uh, two units which is uh, on and off or um, um, yes or no whatever so these, these are two dimensions through which you know, information is being stored in a, in a computer um, bits is the smallest unit it could be either um, on or off or it could be either one or zero this is a bit technical part of it so this is how i develop my understanding that the computer application in any record that we any information that we want to store in any computer is basically um, stored through bits and bits could be either uh, on or off or zero or one and the basic uh, similar to an alphabet so the computer alphabet is zero or one uh, then we have bits which is the tiny units it could be zero or one but it's let's take uh, one and then we have bytes so bytes is like an a word uh, which is a collection of at least eight bits so this is how we form different words in a computer uh, databases for the computer to provide that information later on to us why it is eight a collection or a group of eight bits because this is how initially the the programmer start building application on and then it become a benchmark and standard so could it be more or less i'm not an expert in that but i believe that yes it can be but since it has been taken as a standard so now all the computer application are uh, in terms of bytes it's comprised of eight bits rather than any other number a field is basically uh, the basic information about any one of so uh, a field could be a specific information uh, in a data structure for example uh, we say student names or employee name um, 
asset name so this could be a field so basically a basic information about um, any particular um, any particular data structure uh, then we have a record so a record could be the more detail the more fields about that that subject for example if our first field was student uh, name so it will give us the, the further we need further fields for example the age of the student the class of the student the, the subjects which they are taking uh, the performance of the student so this is as a whole we we consider as a record but again in one class there will be 10 20 30 students so as a whole this whole record of the entire class could be classified as a file in one file or in some companies for example the employee related details for example, the entire record of the employee wages, um, and and when we talk about the wages, there would be different kind of um, elements uh, added to that wage. For example, their basic salary, uh, their um, uh, allowances, and then, then there might be um, some deduction. So that, as a whole, when we uh, we put all that information together in the form of fields against each employee and put it in one one Excel spreadsheet that in itself all could be considered as a file. Then uh, in uh, every databases we need to have a key. A key is a unique identifier, maybe a serial number, employee uh, enrollment number, uh, student enrollment number, employee uh, em serial number, whatever. So this could be a unique number associated with each um, record of an employee so by which we can easily identify uh, a unique student or a unique uh, employee within the entire database. Now let's move to the second part of the, uh, the same topic, which is what is database, what is data, and what is DBMS, database management system. So uh, data is basically um, the, the, the smallest unit of, uh, um, of an information which in itself doesn't make a sense, but when it starts making a sense through context or maybe additional data, then it becomes an information. So in the database, we have a lot of data, which we still need to drive a sense out of it. But how we do it, we do it through an application. So we build an application over the database. And then through that application, we are able to store a new data, uh, transfer the data, manipulate the data, and to retrieve the data in a different form. So we might, if we want to give a command to an application where we want to see all the students who, f who uh, fail certain subjects or the students who score A plus or the student which have uh, multiple attempts. So this all information can be derived through an application and that application in itself is as a whole, the administration part or the governance part is under the database management system, DBM as we call it. So this is an overview of what is databases and uh, what are the key components within the database. So consider database as, um, as, a, as a system by which we collect uh, a lot of information about certain subject and then we have an application on the top of that uh, database by which we can retrieve, transfer, manipulate that information. Uh, as we have discussed in the earlier slide about the databases, so databases can be maintained or structured in a different way. There are different structures of the databases. So not all the information or the data is put in a similar format. We change the structure of the databases as per the need which we want or the application which we want to develop by which we want to retrieve that information. Uh, mainly we will cover four uh, types of structures. The first one is hierarchical structure. The second one is network. Then we have relationship, uh, relation, relational uh, database structure and non-relational database structure.
I will give you an example of the structure. So for instance, you have a wardrobe and you want to organize your clothes in that wardrobe. So there are different ways by which you can do. You can do it by colors, you can do by the type of the clothes, by the size of the clothes, so how you want to organize. So you already have the data, but how you organize that data in a databases, that really matters because that will fulfill your purpose. So based on your purpose, we will use the structure that is more suitable for um, for you to follow um, in your database structure uh, in order to apply and to retrieve the benefit of that database. The first structure in which we, how we organize the data is basically through hierarchical structure, which means that there will be a, a family tree sort of a structure where we need or a plant-based structure where we need to have a root and stem and then the branches and then the fruits and the flowers. So a family tree is similar to that in which we have one key data and then we create branches out of that data. For example, there is a pattern grandparent and parent then uh, child and then keep on going so this is how we structure the data so if uh, in case if you put an inquiry on in any application and that application is using a hierarchical structure so it will uh, initially go to for example if you need any information about the grandchildren so it will initially uh, the system will work in a way that it will go to the family tree then they will see who were the grand great parents then great parents then uh, keep on going till father and then the child and that specific child and then will retrieve the information for you um, so it is relatively a uh, kind of a logics which are which we give to the computer that how they have to retrieve the information the accurate information or this in the exactly the same information which we want but in these kind of databases the processing might take a bit longer to get that information for you. And the more complex form of a, of a hierarchical structure is the network structure in which it is not that it will go in a systematic way, but it will have a cluster of information, for example, um, between different child, it will retrieve that what particular information you need, maybe who is the most smartest one uh, or which one um, is the oldest one. Uh, network structure basically is mainly used in the application of social media where you can see that your friends are your friends friends are being recommended to you in the uh, in the social media uh, applications to add uh, these friends so it's basically a matrix approach where uh, whenever you give a command to the application, the application look for multiple data uh, points from which they collect the information and give it to you. Uh, this is a very fast approach and it is more uh, flexible where it might give you more options from which to choose from. So whenever you put a query in a, on an internet search for a certain product, it gives you multiple products and related products uh, to, to your queries where you choose one from. But if it was hierarchical structure, they would have given only one specific product to you when you search on the uh, internet. Then we have another uh, type of uh, database structure which is called relation, relational uh, database structure basically where uh, it's, it's in the form of a table where we have a columns and rows and we have um, a field and record about each a particular subject maybe let's say if it is about a customer so we will know that how many times that customer visit a restaurant what type of food he uh, ordered and what are the location or what are the preferences of the table he chose while booking the uh, seats at the restaurant so a relationship uh, might uh, take multiple um, fields or columns for you to retrieve the data about the customer so it might give you if you want to send in query to the computer to ask for a certain kind of information like what at what time of the day he comes mostly or what are the what types of uh, food he orders um, does he order a drink or what type of a drink what is the location that he preferred so these kind of information relational information related to that 
one particular subject in the form of a table where we have a column and rows. So we have one customer and there is a lot of fields and that fields are on that customer so we can retrieve any kind of information uh, from the application about that customer. So this is a form of a database which is being used for such type of a purpose. So contrary to the relational database structure, there is another form of a database structure which is called non-relational uh, database structure. Um, I will try to give you an example that how is non-relational database structure works. For uh, for instance, um, in, in the relational database structure, you have a drawer specified for, let's say, um, for clothes and then there is a drawer which is for your cufflinks and then for your tie but in a non-relational shape relational databases what happened that you just have one drawer and you put it everything inside uh, and it gives a, so in, in that case we, we call it in, in an ID term like we have unstructured data so it is not one type of data or item that you put it together in a database uh, you might be having information from a computer perspective from you might be having uh, information uh, in, in the form of emails uh, pictures presentations web links um, so these are different types of information that there might be stored in the, in the uh, non-relational databases this kind of a databases helps you when the when the data is when the data is non-structured and you cannot easily classify but you still want to benefit from that data so when you send a query to an application to get a uh, result, so they will sort it out from that old dump of information and give you something which make much more sense to you. So this is where we use non-relational databases. So overall, to conclude, uh, databases uh, structures are important to know because uh, whatever is our purpose from that application uh, and what type of information data we have, based on that we decide what database structure could better give um, could give us a better result and a faster result and more reliable result. Um, so we have mainly discussed about hierarchical structure where we have a family tree sort of information that we. Saw or no, that we put it in a database, uh, grandparents, parents, and child, that kind of relationship. Then we have a network where we look for different kind of multiple data elements that we connect together in a database so we can retrieve information, for example, social media. Uh, examples which we have discussed where your friends or your friends of friends are being suggested to you to add to your network. Uh, then we have relational databases where the information is sorted uh, is much more sorted in structured information you put it in a database um, then we have a non-relational databases where uh, you have very unstructured and different types of data you put it just in one drawer and you want to retrieve the information and take some sense of uh, out of it Let's have a look at some more terminologies which are related to databases. Uh, DBA, DBA is a database management uh, administrator. Basically, this is the person who is responsible for the addition, deletion, modification, and the, and the security and access of the databases. And uh, similar to a storekeeper who uh, who ensure that who is, what is going inside or outside of the store and to protect that data and that uh, items within the store. So similar to that, a DBA uh, also help or is the overall responsible person for the database. Uh, then we have DDL. Then we have uh, DDL, which is database and definition language. It's a command basically used to build the tables within a database and to build different relationship between the tables in a database. Schema is similar to a blueprint, basically, of the entire databases, and then which gives you an overview of the entire database, similar to that you build a blueprint for building your house. Uh, similar to that, it is it gives for. Um, for a programmer or for um, for any users of the databases to understand how the database look like, what is the structure, what is the logical. Uh, 
structure of their database with different relationship of, with different tables and all. And then we have data dictionary. Data dictionary defines just certain fields of the databases which uh, a user might be interested in knowing it. So it gives an additional information about different fields with, that is being used um, within the database uh, then we have database control language it's again a command which is used to protect the database in terms of its security privacy in terms of access rights um, who can access and modification of the data so this is a command which is used to control the integrity of the database uh, the last one is is database uh, manipulation language dml dml is used to it's basically a command which is used to help that how we can interact with the data which is stored in a database in terms of uh, addition, deletion, and uh, doing different kind of uh, retrieve, retrieval uh, storing of the data within the database. So these are some of the terms which you need to be at least aware of. Um, these are DBA, Database administ uh, Administrator, and then DDL, Data database uh, de definition language then schema what is data dictionary dcl the command language database command language and the last one is database manipulation language here is the second uh, start of the second section in the first section we have discussed about databases and we have discussed about different components related or different terminologies related to databases now we will be discussing about application and application development and maintenance um, whenever we are intending to uh, have an app or an application for any business you or any business need uh, the first thing which we have to do is to assess what is the business needs of that application what is the purpose of to have that information and accordingly we define the workflow like how we will develop that application we also uh, needs to have a steering committee by which we take input from different stakeholders and because that application might have an impact on different uh, stakeholders for example the users of the application the data which we manage in that application the output of that data or the output from that application might be used by some other in departments or um, units of the company um, so that all uh, key stakeholders needs to be part of that and all also, there is a budget that needs to be approved, there is timelines that needs to be approved. There could be a possibility that we have to assess the systems in terms of um, its risk and all. So these all key stakeholders are part of one committee, which is called steering committee, and which oversee the ongoing progress and implementation of that application. Um, that steering committee can also have a role to play to decide whether they want to build an in-house application or to buy a um, bespoke application for their business needs. Maybe, for example, for payroll, they might get a uh, from any of the vendor available options in the software uh, in the market, any softwares, but there might be a specific process, business process, which is very unique to that company. And that might be um, a key player in terms of uh, uh, market competitiveness. Uh, then the the company might be intending to have their own. Then the company might be intending to have their own uh, programmers who develop that uh, application for them. Um, in order to build an application, there are different methodologies that the, the, the uh, programmers use. Uh, these uh, different methods or methodologies which is being used are SDLC, uh, System Development Lifecycle. There is a spiral method, there is a waterfall method, but those are not part of our syllabus. So SDLC we will briefly discuss and then we will move forward. In SDLC, basically it's a very or, uh, systematic and organized Organized way of developing an application where we assess the needs and we carry out a feasibility, then we develop an application, then we um, 
uh, while developing that application, we also carry out different tests and, uh, and take the user acceptance for different uh, critical components of that application or as a whole, the entire application. And then post that application development, we carry out an audit, post uh, implementation or post development of that audit uh, of that application in order to assess whether we have achieved our objectives or not. So this is, uh, these are very detailed and formal way of developing a system, uh, which is under the uh, preview of SDLC, but there are other methods as well for application development. Uh, as we have discussed in the earlier slide, that, that for any kind of uh, application, it is important to understand uh, where, how, what is the data, what is the purpose of that application to develop. Based on that, we decide what is the best structured you know, database that we have to use uh, when, when we are intending to embark on the journey of application development, then we have to understand the business needs, and then we go for different types of application development methodology, and we choose one which is best suited to our need. After all doing this and making an application, the most important critical aspect is to manage their change. When we implement those applications, we don't want any disruption, we want user acceptance, we want to minimize the errors uh, or any disruption. So a successful organization basically manage your change of any application um, de deployment very effectively. They, don't, they want to minimize the effects. So they, they wanted to bring that new application in a controlled manner um, because these application could pose different kind of risk. Maybe the user is not trained, so we have to provide training to the users. We might need additional resources when deploying. We have to do it systematically deployment of those application maybe in different phases or didn't run it parallelly. So this is all part of the change um, which we are bringing and maybe we have to upgrade the, the skill sets of the employees. So it is very much essential for any organization where they want to deploy different kind of applications to have a proper change management mechanism and a process by which they ensure that there is a minimum or less disruption and the risk are being managed properly. It is also important for internal auditor to understand what is the role or what is the role of the internal auditor in the um, application or development of uh, application. Um, and to assess that, it is important to understand the overall context of the organization, like why the organization exists, what is the IT, that, you know, what is the role of the IT in overall success of the organizational objectives, and accordingly, the assess what are the key risks and how we as an internal auditor has to respond to those risks in terms of assessing by controls and giving our uh, independence assurance. Uh, whenever there is an uh, audit of systems and applications, uh, there are things which the internal auditor need to assess is the access controls. Uh, they have to understand the source code of those applications. They have to understand that um, what is the design that are being used for databases application for the application developments and uh, also to perform a post implementation reviews, whether it has been performed earlier by the management or if it is not, then the internal auditor can, can perform and see whether those objectives which were being set uh, in the start of the project, whether the, uh, the new application is meeting those objectives or not. And if there is a gap, then the management has to fulfill that gap. And that we gaps, basically, we highlight in the form of audit findings. Uh, one more concept needs to be understand rapid application method. So this is a new concept where uh, the programmers uh, try to quickly make an application rather than going through a very formal channel as we have uh, discussed earlier in SDLC or Spiral or Waterfall. Uh, here what they happen, they, they develop some a small prototype and uh, show it to the uh, 
uh, to the client or the customer and assess that and ask for their feedback that what are the things that needs to add it, what are the things needs to be changed and accordingly they keep on improving and developing the product, uh, developing the application. There is a software to to build such kind of application which is being used as computer case, computer uh, assisted software engineering which uses a computer to design and develop the different application. Uh, there is another two concepts which we need to understand and user um, computing versus uh, centralized computing and user computing and computer uh, sys computing is basically where the any user uses uh, uh, Sorry, sorry for the background noise and distraction. Uh, I just tried to quiet my kids. So yeah, end user computing is basically where the end user develop uh, application or software, which is outside the preview of the centralized computing, where there is less controls. Uh, obviously, if the end user is using any computing application or or a software, uh, there might be possibility of uh, risk to integration, data losses, security breaches is lack of segregations where um, whereas uh, in contrary to that is uh, we have a, a centralized computing centralized computing is where you know, we use the different kind of application which are centrally managed and the security is being assessed and controlled um, the program updates are properly done integration is properly done so there are these two types of application and user computing could be okay as long as it doesn't affect at the masses level or if it doesn't have any or need to have an integration with the other people or other users for that particular project whereas uh, centralized computing is or application is more important where the outcome of that is is either needs an input from other users or could be used by the other users so these are basically uh, a few more concepts which you need to understand in terms of application development and maintenance so here we are at the end of our presentation to overall conclude in this entire unit 6 we have basically segmented the entire uh, content into two sections the first one is about databases and the second one is about application uh, databases is like the soul and the application is the body um, or the databases is the back uh, information and application is the tool which will retrieve that information uh, we discuss about databases uh, the different types of structure different structures of databases and terms and technology and terminologies related to databases then we move to application and in the application we again assess that whenever we need to have an, an application or an app for any particular purpose we assess what is the need then we identify the process we follow a definite or a formal process for that application development we have we need to have a structure committee to where we take input and approvals from different stakeholders for different processes then we have an option either to buy or to build that application and in terms of building that application there are different methodologies one which we have discussed uh, in detail was SDLC but there are other methodologies as well and there are different other um, related terms and the role of interlocutors in regards to the application that we have discussed um, so this is all for for today's unit and if you like please do not forget to share with other people so they may also benefit from it and please remember me and my family in your prayers so i keep on posting um, for the remaining units as well and try to finish at least the entire cia part three um, for for the users to to benefit from thank you and take care and hope to see you in the next video